Hello, nerds, and welcome back to the Legend of Dragoon right here on Missledyne Online. What's up? That's me. That, um, well, it, it, it's my channel. Uh, thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Legend of Dragoon video. In the last episode, we tackled the entirety of the Death Frontier. It was quite a good guide, if I don't say so myself. I showed you how to get every single item, as well as navigate our way out of that place. And some helpful tips and tricks about leveling there, because it's really good. And we found ourselves here... And Ulu uh, and Uluru, uh, <laughs> Ulara, which is the the ancient city of the Winglies. These are the Winglies that have been around for eleven thousand years, and somehow their time has stopped, and they're essentially immortal. And we talked to Sh Charlie Frama, the sister of Melbu, and she told us so many facts. In this episode, we are going to explore the city or the town, the Spring Breath Town, Ulara, and, uh, and and gather our party, and then we're going to head over to Rouge, Hashel's hometown, which will actually lead us to all of the places that we were told we need to go to stop the signets from being destroyed. So, uh, let's get into it. First and foremost, hi, people. There are two magic elements sealed in Rose's Choker. One is to open the signet of the city, and the other is immortality oh rose is immortal because of the magic in the choker standing in the darkness of the night you feel almost like you've lost your sense of existence have you had this kind of experience darkness signifies the uneasiness black signifies the sorrow they are the colors of rose interesting that these guys are talking about the color of rose while they are looking at roses it's hard to hold it without being scratched by the thorns and we just got another stardust my friends which means we are we are so close. There are actually three Stardusts that we can get here in uh, Ulara, Ulara, the Spring Breath Town. That is the first of them. Very cool. I actually just really love this fountain area. It's, it's really, really nice. It's beautiful. So we're going to keep exploring Ulara. We have to go everywhere anyways to collect the members of our party because they all split up from us when we started talking to Charlie. And, of course, here's two of them. So, we are leaving in the morning. Yeah, we are. What are you doing here? We don't know what will happen in the ancient city of Wingleys. We need strong weapon. Hmm. Mongol doesn't care about leader of creatures. Mongol goes with you to the end. For me, too. It is no longer the mere problem of the moon gym. I cannot ignore this crisis of the world. You didn't imagine we wouldn't go with you, did you? I didn't. Hurry up if you want to buy. Humans and Giganto, your time is limited. Uh, okay. I don't know what that means, but that sounds a little... A little rude. Anyways, if we look over here where Kongle was just looking... This is... Our second Stardust! Which means, my friends, there are only two Stardusts left in the entire game. Yeah, that's right. Does this contain magic too? What is this for? It looks like a wagon. Very cool. Anyways, let's talk to the shopkeeper, the weapon-selling Wingly, and see what they got for us, my friends. What do you got? We have a fairy sword. It gives 50% more SP. Completely useless for us, though. Completely useless. Of course, we are going to buy it because I need one in my inventory, but we're not going to equip it. Remember, Dart's maxed out now. He has he's He's got his Dragoon level 5. He doesn't really need that. And we're also going to go ahead and pick up the Arrow of Force, which does the same thing. Gives 50% more SP, and it's actually one of the strongest weapons for Miranda. Uh, and I believe this is the only place that we can actually get the Arrow of Force. Although, if I'm wrong on that, please let me know. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't drop from any enemies. Just like the Fairy Sword, this, this is the only place where you can actually buy the Fairy Sword in the entire game. We also have the Thunder Fist, which is a thunder-based attack uh, added to, of course, Hatchel. But since nothing is weak to thunder, the attack really only has, like, I don't know, uh, it looks cool. Uh, but it has the drawback of doing less damage to thunder-based enemies. And there are a few thunder-based enemies that we don't really want to be attacking with Hatchel. Uh, so I would buy one just to have it in our inventory because, again, this is the only place that you could do it. Uh, but I'm not going to equip it. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the Magical Greaves are also available only in New Lara. So if you want to have a maxed out inventory or whatever of every enemy or every equipment that you can get in the game, uh, I would recommend buying one of these. It increases escape rate of magic and physical attacks by five, which again is just like an evasion thing. We're not going to equip it, but we will buy it. 
We also have a magical ring, which raises the magical attacking power, so we don't necessarily need another one of those. And the spiritual ring, which increases your magical defense power. We actually don't have one of those, uh, so we're going to buy them just to have it in our inventory. We obviously have an elude cloak and a spirit cloak. Uh, and I believe we do not have a Sage's Cloak, but those are basically an Elude Cloak and a Spirit Cloak combined, right? Which is very, very good. Um, it increases it increases your evasion and uh, your attack evasion and magic evasion by 20 points, which is actually quite strong. So we'll go ahead and pick one of those up as well. I also went through my entire inventory selling pretty much everything so that I have enough uh, gold for uh, a little bit of a... I, I, I'd like to have enough gold to buy some things coming up. But anyways, that is everything that we can get here with this guy. But we can use this teleporter that's kind of hidden a little bit here to actually go down into this shop as well. We can talk to the item selling Wingly. I made these just for today. And we can buy some things that are actually very, very useful, including uh, we can buy now panic bells, stunning hammers, poison needles, midnight terrors. Uh, we can actually buy attack balls and recovery balls if for whatever reason you wanted to use those, which you, you weirdo. Uh, but I do want to pick up a, I have a poison needle and a panic bell. So I'm going to leave those for now. But the the panic bell in particular, it, it, it applies confusion to your enemies and it's actually very, very useful. The poison needle obviously being useful for the lucky jar that we saw in the last episode, the unique monster there. So I wanted to point out that you can buy those if you were missing them. You could buy them right here uh, to to actually, you know, use them on the lucky jar if if you so choose. Although lucky jar again is one of those enemies that like just isn't really worth it. Anyways, we'll leave the shop here now that we have Albert and Congo back in our party. And we can go get our third and final Stardust that's here in Ulara. There's actually also a bar that we can go to. Now, I didn't grab this in the last episode just because I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to wait until we explored Ulara properly instead of just getting the information right. I wanted to wait until we explored. But if we come over here and talk to this plant, oh, in the mouth of this plant, we can get our third and final Stardust that's in Ulara, which means, my friends, there is only one left in the entire game. I gotta watch out or it'll bite me. Can you believe that? One left, my friends. That is absolutely crazy. I can't believe it. You know things are uh, heating up when you're almost done getting Stardust. Anyways, we can use this right here. So there was actually a scene that I missed over by the rose bed in the previous episode in my rush to get everything out. And I figured that I'd come back and actually show you guys this. So if you approach the rose bed, Miranda, Hatchel, and Dart will come. Roses. I think Shauna would be happy to see them. Hmm. It makes me relieved. I didn't know you liked flowers, Miranda. I guess there is some woman in you. <laughs> Don't misread me. Roses make me puke. They are just flashy. They don't have any kindness in them. Do you know why roses have thorns? It is to bring out their own red using the blood of the people they hurt. They'll do anything for their own happiness. <laughs> Let's move on. I don't need to be here. Yeah. Uh... Okay, which it's important to get that scene for this one. It's not true. The reason why I hate roses is because I see my mother in roses. My mother never looked at me directly. It was as if she was hiding something from me. And she beat me up. I didn't know what was going on or why she was doing it to me, but I remember at least one thing. There were always roses on the shelf behind my mother. <laughs> Why did your mother leave you? Sorry. Let's not talk about me anymore. It spoils our drinks. Hmm, I don't think so. It is okay to be this way. Life is not always happy. Listening to your story <laughs> reminds me of my past. About your runaway daughter, right? You are so sharp that it hurts. I hate being roundabout. Oh, you guys are here. When are we leaving? Hatchel has been drinking too much since he heard we are going to Rouge. That's right. Drink a little more and let's leave for Rouge at once. 
Of course, to save the world. Hmm. Give me a drink, too. May I join? I wanted to talk to you, Miranda. Same here. Whoa. Interesting. We're all having a little bit of a drink. Shall we go? That's actually, I really like that moment. Uh, I think it's just, it's just cool to have, like, that sense of camaraderie where they sit down and actually talk to each other over, over a drink or two. An age when the world was ruled by wingleys. In order to pay for that, we're now stuck in here. We will have no quietude until we destroy the spirit of the God of Destruction. During the time of the Dragon Campaign, Wingleys were divided into two camps. Each followed one of the leaders, Charlie and Melbu, who were siblings. You might not have imagined it, but Charlie is the leader of the moderate Wingleys. Interesting. I could have, I could kind of imagine it. The spell of eternity indeed creates an immortal body, but it also corrodes the heart. This is a place to heal the corroded heart from the spell of eternity. Enjoy yourself. And we get instantly healed if we go use this? Wait a minute. No, I think that guy was just talking about booze. <laughs> if you come back to the bar after leaving, though, there's actually new people here that you can see and you can talk to. As long as you are in this city, the time flowing in the body stops. This is immortality. Wait, we're immortal as long as we stay here? As long as they stay in the city, all creatures are immortal. Well, I don't want to go anywhere. Mortality is a magic that goes against the law of nature. It is a magic of solitude that turns you into a being who is abandoned by the world. Mortality brings unhappiness. You realize it's saying rose, don't you? I am, I'm just not that type of person. I don't know what it is, but immortality is not something that I would ever deny. You know, I know, I get it. I get like the, the, the philosophy behind it. And I, I understand that like you have to watch everything you've ever cared about eventually die out while you sit there and watch, right? And like a lot of things that suddenly mean that, you know, a lot of things that mean something in life because they're fleeting suddenly disappears. But like, imagine everything that you could learn and know and see with your own eyes. Imagine all the things you could do with immortality. Yeah, I would take it. Oh, Miru, the one person we're missing. Hey, buddies. Karen was telling me about the teleporting device. It's not like back home. And when were we going? We already heard lots about it from Charlie, and we found out where we should go, so... You're coming too? Of course. Without me, the strongest of all, you cannot save the world. Besides, I learn a lot following Dart. Everybody's the same. Gigantos, humans, and winglies. And I can't stand the construction of a world where everybody lives. I said construction, but I meant destruction. I think for the first time, I agree with Miru. Is this the first time? Leave here tomorrow morning. By that time, I'll be prepared so I can send you on the way that goes to the home of Gigantos from here. We can travel that far instantly? <laughs> then we might as well go directly to Rouge. Mm, our power is becoming weaker day by day. That is our maximum power. I understand. Take a boat to Rouge. It should have been prepared in the Twin Castle a short while ago. Uh, was there a dock in that castle? Hmm. I asked King Zor and had him make one especially. I'm surprised that he listened to a wingly. There are no humans or winglies when it comes to the end of the world. You don't need to thank us. Now, it is not too much to say that the mission of the city is to send you off. Yes. And this is one way. The city has been looking after the world. Let's go back to Charlie. She must have prepared the bedrooms for us. And we get a moment to uh, uh, arrange our party as we see fit. This actually looks like a pretty good one to me. Uh, so I think I'm going to leave Rose and Albert in for now. Again, I still have a bunch of additions, and I need to get their Dragoon levels up, so this feels like a pretty good time to, to use them. Of course, we can go... Oh, where's Charlie? Charlie, hello! Anyways. And... God, I just love this map so much! Look at how just... Oh, my God, this town is just so beautiful. I love it so much. Especially because we get to see it at night and during the day, and it's just... Like, both of both of them look exquisite, right? I absolutely love it. I wonder if there's anything in the bar now. 
completely deserted. Wow, weird. That's probably because the entire town, my friends, the entire town has gathered to say goodbye to us. Charlie, what is this? Oh, naive boy. Don't you understand? It's a send-off for great heroes. You shouldn't have. Don't be so shy. Rosie, honey, you've been doing really great. Since the soul of the Virage embryo, the god of destruction was released, you've saved the world, let me see, at, at least 107 times. Really? After even being called a black monster? Stop it. The monster has died. Hmm. Zigi is serious, and he has everything to give birth to the God of Destruction. Only dragoons can stop him. I wonder what creator Soa is thinking. Like destruction or regeneration? I wonder why it wants us to go through such a painful thingy. We will change fate. Everybody must survive, okay? Now go. Zeke won't wait for us. Thank you so much, Karen. Right. And off we go, my friends. All the way from the Death Frontier. Wait, wait, wait just a gosh darn second. So we can actually run over to the home of Giganto? That's crazy. All right, but before we do that, I want to get into a random encounter, but not actually. I actually want to go back into Ulara and show you some other dialogue stuff. Because there is actually some new dialogue that you can get in the Spring Breath Town. We will always be looking after you guys. The future of the world is on you. Good luck. Thank you so much, Karen. Anyways, like I said, there there actually really is like some some new things that that people will suggest or say to us and obviously these winglies are ancient. So like I want to hear what they have to say. I've never been outside of this city since it was created 11,000 years ago, but but it was my choice to remain in the city. So I have no regrets. All right. What about you? Winglies have remained alive in many other places by closing the world within boundaries, just like the forest of winglies. I would like the Winglies living in other places to know of the outer world. However, it requires time. Very interesting. So they're aware of the forest of Winglies. Of course they are. They're ancient beings, these ones. Sometimes you should remember the self within you that loves flowers, not to lose yourself. When you lose yourself, remember the self within you that loves flowers. Okay. In order to bring back the dreams and hopes to humans who were worn out by the dragon campaign, we created Stardust. I hope the stardust that we created is even now bringing happiness to people. It sure is, especially since there's only one more in the entire game. Very interesting to me that Wingley's created stardust, so they must have some magic power. Anyways, if you come to the shop here, uh, very oddly enough, the item selling one is up here and the weapon seller is still here too. So you can't actually go use that, that, that teleporter this time because this gate here is, is open or, or yeah, open, I guess, or closed, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so you can't actually go through. Now, it's kind of weird because I believe at nighttime, because it changes, you can actually, you can go in there. Anyways, something really, really important here, and you don't necessarily need to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and sell one of those, uh, is I really recommend picking up some panic bells uh, and having those in your inventory for a certain unique monster later on. Um, it is it is one that you're going to need uh, because it is, it's a unique monster that is only weak to confusion damage, just like the lucky jar from the previous episode is only uh only weak to poison damage so that's why that's why i'm getting rid of the poison needle obviously because i don't need to deal with the lucky jar anymore but i just thought i'd point that out and also it's interesting that they both of those shopkeepers are now on the same floor oddly enough and let's go head over to the bar see what's going on down there maybe get a drink hello there's not many people here at all we only provide relaxation time during the night come back after dusk Hmm, how do we get here after dusk? We're still closed, human guests. Okay, fine. I'll come back when it's dark, I guess. What about up here by the giant man-eating flowers? 
and of course Charlie. Hey, it's a hard job saving the world, but you can do it. I know you can. Good luck for the world and for everybody. What about you? Would you like me to tell you the story of the two winglies who were leaders again? No. No, I meant to say no. I can't believe I had to sit through that whole, whole story just because I accidentally clicked a button. Anyways, let's see what Charlie has to say. I can't believe her name's Charlie. Why did I think it was something so grandiose? She is. Oh, Dart, honey pie, you're back. You want to listen to my story again? Uh, no thanks. Hmm, okay. I don't, we don't have time to chit chat. But if you don't know where you should go, come back anytime. I'll give you good instructions. Cool. So if we get lost, she'll tell us where to go. But right now, it's pretty obvious that we need to head to Rouge. Rouge. Not Rogues. Why did I say that? Rouge. <laughs> Which is the best way to get there? Uh, obviously, we need to go to the home of Gigantos, which is so strange. Now, if you leave and come back, you can actually kind of like reset the town to be dusk. Uh, we brought a mistake into the world. This city, Ulara, exists to correct it. it. Is our duty, our obligation to look after the world, it is our penance. Yeah, so the dialogue actually changes uh, many, many times here in this area. Like the NPCs that are wandering around and stuff like that also change like this these people aren't here anymore like i don't know it's 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 one of the few times in the entire game where i think the population is actually way more dynamic like these guys are actually talking now maybe you can liberate rose from the spell of eternal life please liberate rose from liber, liberate rose from the proper standing in the darkness of the night you feel almost like you've lost your sense of existence oh we've seen this before but thank you so much for for those kind words anyways that is it for those guys uh, we could go talk to the item shop. Actually, you know what? I will show you the item shop because I mentioned how the they kind of like joined floors, right? I'm pretty sure at nighttime they don't. And you can actually use the teleporter. Which is such a weird thing, but... I also love that you like teleport. See, see what I mean? Like now we can actually go down into this area. So it's not like gone for good or anything. It's just, it's just weird that that's even a thing. I just wanted to point that out. Anyways, you know me, I like to be as thorough as possible, but that is everything that we can do in Ulara now, both at nighttime and during the day. Remember, what's weird about this city too is that the city itself and any creature in it is immortal because of the magics. So we'll head to the home of Giganto and get ready for this. This is a throwback to I don't even know how many episodes ago when we actually were here in the home of Giganto. Remember that face? That statue that I was telling you about? I know. It was a while ago. Home of Gigantos. It was linked to here. It's been a while. Karen and Gigantos were pals for a long time. Of course, it was when there were still some Gigantos left. But Miru. There were nice winglies like Char Charlie. They weren't all brutal people, unlike the legends tell. We have to rewrite the book in the National Library. Yes, correct knowledge brings correct conduct. That's after this journey has ended. Let's go see King Zor. We have to head to Rouge on the Queen Fury. Very, very interesting, my friends. Now, something else that you could do now that you're in the home of Gigantos is you could, of course, farm out some sachets from piggies, especially since you're more powerful now and you don't have to worry about anybody really destroying you. You can spend more time and, like, you're just going to be one shot and everything anyway, so it's much faster now to actually farm those out if that's something that you choose to do. Uh, but we're not going to do that. There's actually a ton of darn random encounters. Like I was saying, there's a ton of backtracking that we can actually do here we can go to a bunch of different areas, back to Salise, back to Bale, especially uh, because there are some things actually going on in Bale. Uh, so those are those are like places we're going to go to before we actually progress with the main story. Because again, I want to be as thorough as possible and I want to show you guys that stuff. And of course, I'm going to skip that journey because I don't think we need to see it. Big deal though, while we have been making our way over to where we need to go, Rose has learned the Dark Dragon. That means that she, my friends, is Dragoon level 5. 
And now that we're through that area, we're actually going to be skipping going to Fletz right away because that is where we need to go. Remember, Queen's Fury is now going to be docked there for us to head to Rouge. But like I said, there's backtracking to be done. And the first stop on our massive backtracking is Bale, which is pretty cool because as usual, you know who we're going to go talk to. And that, my friend, is Lavitz's mom. Because we we haven't seen her. Well, we did see her a little bit, you know, but we... we well, it's fine. We should go say hi. Maybe she'll have something actually, you know, unique to say this time. The boy called me grandma. He said he loves me. I have a warm feeling. It's been a while since I've had such a warm feeling. Oh, I guess. Man, the last time we saw them is that they never should have said anything about replacing Lavitz. But this time, it's the first time my boy opened up to anyone other than us. Oh, Lavitz's mother has something to smile about again. I'm glad that she's happy. What? That's so cute. Our son melted the heart of Lavitz's mother. Lavitz's mother smiled for the first time in a while. I'm glad. Oh. Finally. All right. See what I mean? That was worth coming all the way back to Bale to see, right? The boy doesn't say anything to us, though. <laughs> The boy's like, nope, not saying nothing. Well worth coming to bail. Now, there is somebody else here as well that we can find in bail. Now, something that I want to show real quick here in bail is this scene with the painter. Because painting portraits reminds me of Sir Lavitz. She doesn't want to paint portraits anymore. She still paints, but she doesn't want to paint portraits. Kind of sad. That's the first time I've actually shown that on video. And now that that minor backtrack all the way to Bale is over. Of course, there's nothing else in any other town, but Lohan you could go to. Bale you could go to. There's nothing new in Salise either, even though I thought there was, so I went and checked, and guess what? There's not. So, finally, we can head to the Twin Castle in Fletz and see what's going on here. Even though it's not really backtracking. Hello, friends. What are you doing, Nello? I did it. I really did it. It's a big step forward. I made it. Listen. Please listen. I saw some seeds in the barrens, and believe it or not, the buds sprouted. Incredible. But it's just a beginning. We have to propagate more seeds and sow them in the barrens. Now, I'll be busy. I guess the barrens might really be turned into a green environment. Hmm. Yes, it will someday. That's so cool, Nello. I still feel like I'm being watched by somebody. Oh, still? That's awkward. Anyways, we want to head to the Twin Castle because, my friends, we can finally go to the, the, the dock area, which I've actually pointed out in previous episodes that it was there, but I never said why. You'll see. Anyways, let's go talk to this guy who will let us into the castle. And there's actually some hidden scenes that we can get here as well. Obviously, the one with Nello. If you don't go talk to Nello, you completely miss it. But there's there's other ones as well with some of the royalty that we can find here in Fletz. Hello, what is happening here? Dart, I've been waiting for you. Uh, what is this? We are seeing you off. We received a messenger from Charlie. Her name was Karen. Everything is ready for going to Rouge. The world must not be destroyed. Even if it was the intention of the creator, we are still alive and living. I beg of you, please save the world. Dude, you don't have to ask me twice. Commodore Pooler is waiting for you in the basement. To carry our hope. <laughs> oh. Thank you so much, friends. Don't worry. I will save the day. As always. So long. Now, these two doors are now open. And they officially lead to the seaport. But we don't want to go there just yet. Because, of course, we need to go check in with some of the dialogue options that we can get here in Flets while we are here. Right? Now, these are, of course... These scenes are only here, right now. Please excuse me for not offering you an official greeting, your majesty. 
Well, well. <laughs> Please don't be so formal, sacred sister of Milisezu. I cannot because I'm in the presence of the king, your majesty. Then it should be the same with Albert, true? Albert? Uh, his majesty told me to treat him as an equal and a friend. Then let me say so too. Treat me as an equal. You are heroes. You have freely chosen to go out and save the world. Don't be so formal like some envoy. I understand, your majesty. King Zor, what were you discussing? Hmm. I heard what is going on from the messenger of the Winglies, but whether I should let this be known to our people or not... Uh, agitation takes prudence away. It is wise to not let them know until the time has come. Indeed, we reached the same conclusion. Milisesu would have made the same judgment. Now, the only thing left is to just do it. We believe in you young people. That's why we will wait for you. Beautiful. Before it'll be too late, head for Rouge on the Queen Fury. It's been a while since we've been on the Queen Fury, my friends. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. We rushed to create a port out of the underground storage space that we weren't using. It's great that we finished it in time. Tell me about it. Commodore Pooler's hanging out there. We received a messenger called Karen from Ulara. She told us everything. The story from Karen is too much for people to hear. Please keep it confidential. Yeah, I'd say. I wish we could see, like, the Queen's Fury from here, but we can't. So, anyways, uh, we need to check in with Princess Lisa and Princess Emile because they also have little dialogue for us. Uh, and, and, you know, I want to see those scenes. So, let's check in with Princess Emile first. Oh, Albert. Uh, let's wait for him outside. Under these circumstances, it's okay for him to do it. I have somebody I want to meet, too. Hmm. I was praying for everybody's safety. How much weight did you give to me in that prayer? Please don't tease me. Sorry. Oh, Albert, is anything wrong? Even I, as a king, can feel fear. And I sometimes feel I would like to be able to rely on somebody, just like regular people. Oh, please rely on me. I will accept everything from you, including your fear. But I won't see you off. Otherwise, I would stop you from going by using whatever means. Shall we? Mm -hmm. Yes, everything is ready. That's such a cute scene! And again, this is the only time that you can get that. Now, I'm not actually sure if there is a scene with Miru and Guaraha, but I will pray to the stars every day until you come back. Every day. Every day. All right. Bye. I'm not sure, actually, uh, if, if there is a scene in the Forest of Wingley's or even if we could get to the Forest of Wingleys right now, I'm honestly not sure we would be able to get there. And what about Princess Lisa? Oh, you have finally succeeded. I am glad. I knew you could do it, Nello. <gasps> oh, I don't remember if I have ever been this happy. It is not even for me, and I am this happy. What happened to me? Uh, oh, Tart, uh, <laughs> since when have you been here? Uh, long enough. Uh, uh, how may I help you? <laughs> so it is Nello that she's in love with. I can tell. You will come back safe. You can trust my astrology. You know this, don't you? I do. I'll see you later, girl. So funny. And that's it in Flets, my friends. Which means that, really, the only thing that remains is for us to take the boat to Rouge. So, obviously, we need to head into these doors because the Queen's Fury is waiting for us. But get this. I actually, off screen, I went all the way to Danau to see if we could take Queen's Fury if, like, for whatever reason, it was in two locations at once. Uh, and it's not. So, there is no way to go to the Wingley Forest right now. And I just wanted to point that out because... Seeing Miru say that led me to thinking, I wonder if there's a hidden scene there. And uh, no, there isn't. I've taken... Guys, <laughs> this episode has been recording for two and a half hours. 
Oh my god, look at how cool! And I, it just didn't need to be. Oh, you're here! <laughs> Everybody looks confident. Although you are going to an unknown land, there is no hesitation or wavering. Actually, it's my... A man of the sea isn't bothered by those little details. <laughs> anyway, we're ready to go. We absolutely have to stop the crazy conspiracy to annihilate the world. However, we should never give up rescuing our loved ones either. <laughs> that is the true man of the sea. Let us be going, Dart. And friends. The ocean awaits you. <laughs> I love Bueller, man. The Commodore makes it sound simple, but I assume that this time it will be a long journey, won't it? Yes. Then I think you'd better get what you need from the city and come back. <laughs> oh, I got what I need. It's okay. I'm happy to help you, Dart. Besides, please, please rescue Shauna. We give you our promise. Of course we will. I'll be waiting for you on the boat. Guys, let's go take the butt. The boat. Let's go. I don't really think we need to get anything. Not anymore, my friends. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk to Kayla. I've been waiting for you. Are you ready? Oh, yes, we are, my friends. We are ready to go. Look at Pooler, like, sitting on the boat. Now we are leaving. Guys, this is it. Going to a new land, Hatchel's hometown. How exciting. And we are here on the continent of Endoness, it says, which is actually super cool. Now, we could go on to the Queen's Fury, but there's no real need to. Uh, and there's actually a... The, the final unique monster that we can find is actually on this route here. No, no joke. We can find it right now. And... Oh, my God! There it is! The Rainbow Bird, my friends. The most lucrative. The most lucrative unique monster in the entire game. This thing gives 3,000 experience when defeated. No joke. This is the enemy that you want to save your sachets for. This is the enemy you want to use them on. This is what we've been waiting for the entire time. But what we're going to do first is Dart's going to go ahead and he's actually going to use... Uh, so if you wanted to do this in a way without using any of your sachets at all, the way that you do it is you can use a panic bell on the rainbow bird, which we have four of them. And that will cause it to be confused. Now what we want to do is we actually just want to... No! At least this thing's got a very, very high encounter chance. Let's try again with the panic bell. If this doesn't work, I'm going to use the sachet on the next one because it really is, it really is worth using those. This is the only time, the only enemy that I would suggest using your sachets on. And once it's confused and it doesn't run away, you can just go ahead and guard until hopefully it hits itself or runs away. Okay, this is it. This is the final time, all right? I don't even, listen. <laughs> all right, this is it. We have one more panic bell. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna use it. You know what? No. He's made listen, the rainbow bird has made a fool of me for the last time, so I am going to use the sachet and finish it off. Goodbye, rainbow bird. And finally we get to use stuff in our inventory. How exciting! Guys, look at look at how much we get from this. Three thousand experience isn't that just crazy albert of course leveled up because he's a beautiful man level 29 now something else that i want to mention about rain the rainbow bird and this is actually my third encounter with it because i figured i'd use all my sachets on it now is yeah you can use the confusion but like it really is just better to farm out the sachets and use it that way and even that isn't really the best way of leveling because it takes so long to get the sachets from the piggies. But this also isn't the only place that the rainbow bird can be found. This is just the highest likelihood. They can also be found on the road between Death Frontier and Ulara, but it's very, very rare. And you can also be found in a later area uh, that we, we haven't gotten to just yet. Um, which it's one of the final areas of the game and it's it's just not worth finding them there uh, because there are better enemies that we can find in that area that are also sort of considered unique monsters just because of how much experience they actually give 
The other thing is that it does have a chance of dropping a rainbow dress, which we can't get until uh, a future city that we haven't gotten to yet. But I just wanted to point that out. I've actually fought three of them now. They have four health. They will very likely run away from you uh, with the confusion technique. So this is just a better way of doing that. Me and leveled up in our reserves to 32, but that's it. That was the fastest 9,000 experience outside of a boss fight I think I've ever had in the entire game. And uh, we did, of course, eliminate all of our Sachets. Now, I thought that I would also point out that we can actually, you know, go back on the Queen's Fury and, and talk to talk to people, but there's there's nothing there's nothing really that they'll say. They'll just be like, oh yeah, this is the journey we're going on. I'm very excited. We're going to save the world. Uh, but I thought I would just I would just point that out. There's no hidden scenes or anything like that on the Queen's Fury. And my friends, here it is: the Outland Village Rouge, the homeland of Hatchel and his daughter Claire, who went missing, and he's been searching for her. And we'll tackle that in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was a really big one. Uh, over three hours of footage that I'm going to have to edit down. And hopefully uh, hopefully, this was a good video for you guys. Uh, the next episode is going to be a pretty big deal. Because we're going to be going to Rouge. Uh, and then heading to the magical city of Ageless. Or Ageless. Or Agless. Or whatever you want to call it. That's where we're going. Thank you guys so much for watching. A uh, huge shout out to all of you watching in the premieres every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Sincerely appreciate you guys. And remember, never give up, never surrender to that gosh darn rainbow bird.